Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in to Faithfield Devotionals. This is the time where we set aside to look at the Bible and Bible principles that can help us reach the destinations that we need to in our lives. Today we're starting a new topic and we're starting a new chapter. James chapter 4. We've come a long way. And we've been dealing here with chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4. A lot of stuff, a lot of information, a lot of doctrine. Chapter 1 gives you several introductory thoughts that really set up the rest of the book. Chapter 2, we deal with two main thoughts there. Beware of favoritism, beware of faithless works, or workless faith, however you want to look at it. Chapter 3, we deal with two concepts. This idea of beware of the power of the tongue, and also beware of false wisdom. And in chapter 4, we're going to be looking at something that's very important. James is going to get real serious in this part of the book where he talks about beware of a divided heart. We do not need to have our heart split. We need to be solely dedicated to the Lord. And it's so easy for our heart to become divided. It's so easy for, as James says, to become double-minded. And we're trying to avoid that. So verses 1 through 10 we're going to be looking at over the next several episodes. And today we're going to look at the first three verses of chapter 4. And I hope that you'll look at it with an open heart. And uh, you will seek to have your heart singular towards the Lord. James chapter 4, verse number 1, 2, and 3. James comes right at the folks and he says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of the lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and ye war, yet ye have not. Because ye ask not. Verse 3, ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Now, James is going to be dealing with this, but just let me give you some heads up thoughts to show us what's, where we're going with this. These Christians, as all Christians do, were struggling with worldliness. And, and, and when I say the word worldly, what comes to your mind? Well, worldly means to be in love with the world rather than in love with God. You're taking leadership from from the things, the philosophies, the doctrines, the teachings of the world rather than the philosophies and the teachings and the doctrines of the Bible. And so these Christians were really struggling. They were looking at God and, boy, I want to be a Christian and I want to follow the Lord. I've been saved. And then they were looking over at the world and they kind of liked both of them. And they were struggling just as all of us do and we just always need to be reminded, this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue, as the song says. And we need to make sure that we know that this world is not our home. And these Christians were struggling with it, and James was confronting them with it. They're, they're, this idea of pride is the root of worldliness. If you, if you see the tree of worldliness, what's at its root? Pride. This idea of being conceited, this idea of being independent of God, this idea of, no, I'm not going to lean on somebody else, I'm going to do it my way. This is what dominates us, and this is what is causing a divided heart. Pride is the philosophy of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Pride is the exact opposite of who God is and what he desires for us. A man named William Barclay said, Pride is the ground on which all other sin grows, and is the parent of all other sins. What was the problem that got Lucifer kicked out of heaven and made him Satan? It was nothing but dirty, rotten, stinking, filthy pride. And we struggle with it. He came to this earth, Satan, full of pride, and he is trying to drive his me monster mentality into us. And that's why when we read these verses here about wars and fightings and killings and contentions, this is what's going on. There's a battle over pride. And I want to give a, a verse here that really helps us to think, and then I want to look at just two main points here. Proverbs sixteen eighteen says, All, uh, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Anytime you see somebody destroyed, destroy their life, ruin their life, uh, anytime you see somebody fall, you can mark it down. There was pride involved. Paul says, let he that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. So we need to be careful about that. Two things. Pride causes contention. 
and pride causes covetousness. Verse 1 and 2 show this, that pride caused contention. And when I mean contention, I mean arguing. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 10, only by pride cometh contention. So if you have two people that are arguing, two people that are going at each other, what can we deduce from that situation? Well, there's pride involved. And this goes back to chapter number 3. Worldly or earthly wisdom is being used here. And it is causing this conflict. Contention causes social strife. In verse number 1, when you see it say, from whence come wars, that means armed conflict, okay? That's something physical there. Uh, when, and whence come fightings among you. The word fightings means to have quarrels, to have strife and disputes. So wars refers to physical conflict, and, and, and fightings refers to verbal conflict. Do you get along with people? You're supposed to. You're supposed to be at peace with God, and that ought to translate into your relationships. Is there social strife in your life? And then verse 2 really deals with spiritual strife, where it says, Rather, ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. The word lust here is the idea of pleasures or enjoyment. And this is lust and pleasures that are enjoyed in a negative or sinful state. Uh, this takes us back to James 1, 14 and 15. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lusts. It was lust that was causing these wars. It was lust that was causing these problems between the people uh, and then them between God. And the word war here is a different word war than verse number one. This word war means to serve in an army. Christians were literally at war with themselves, with others, and with God. Spiritual strife. Pride causes contention. And so, if you feel there's strife in your life, you've got to find out where the pride is and get rid of it. Take a humble approach. Admit that you're wrong. Admit that you've made mistakes. If you can't do that, what, what's the point? You know, if you can't admit that you've made wrongs, then, then you have a real problem. We've got to be able to acknowledge our mistakes and be willing to, to reconcile. And then, secondly, pride causes covetousness. And we see this again in verse 2 and 3, where it says, You have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust. Can I just remind you that coveting, which is defined as wanting something uh, so bad that you're not happy unless you have it. Look, it's not wrong to want a nice house. It's not want wrong to want a nice car. But if you can't be happy without those things, that is called covetousness. And we see other people's stuff and, oh, if I only had that, I'd be happy. No, you need to be thankful. Can I remind you that covetousness does not bring contentment? It does not. You must learn to be content, as Paul just said in Philippians chapter number 4. He's learned whatsoever state he is therewith to be content. Are you content with the things that you have? Are you thankful for the things that you have? These people were fighting amongst themselves, coveting, trying to get things from one another, uh, and that was wrong. Let's be content. Let's not covet. And covetous, lastly, in verse 3, leads to compromise. It says, Ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. There are wars, there are fightings that we have within ourselves that translate into our lives. And we need to stop this divided heart and we need to get to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is pride. It's that time of year where we start to weed our gardens and we start to plow up the ground and we start to mow the yards again and get everything in season. And that's wonderful, great. In my house I have a little bit of weed killer. And that weed stops things from growing. It goes down to the root and kills it. Let's spray the weed killer of God's word on the pride in our lives and say, I need to get along and I need to be a blessing to my neighbors. And that's what we really need to endeavor to do. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you have a great day. God bless you.